We are a startup and we'll always be a startup even if we are 20,000 people. Hello and welcome to Outlook Business. This is a very special series called Changing the Curve where we speak to industry experts and leaders, those stirring a change in the world of business, startups and entrepreneurship. They are the future or they at least aspire to be but they certainly are the trendsetters in their respective fields. Join me Shanakshi Chakravarti as I speak to those who are literally changing the curve. How did your journey really start? Hmm. Let talk us through your, you know, the point where it triggered you to start something like Leverage Edu. Sure, so, but but so very simply, uh, Shonakshi, we are a platform that is enabling people anywhere in the world to become global citizens. Uh, we decided to kind of start to do this in India. Uh, today we are at a scale where uh, we are helping thousands of folks every single month, enable them to kind of think about uh, their life as global citizens in a borderless world. So I think that's what we primarily do. We started by doing that through student admissions, but over the course of the interview, I'll tell you that we are doing multiple things within that paradigm now. So how do you really identify yourself in today's market, in today's India's e startup ecosystem? How do you really identify yourself? So never thought about identifying across a certain category per se. Uh, we had somebody call us Edfin recently mm -hmm. uh, because we focus on the Ed part of helping a student get to a college and the uh, Fin part of helping them finance the entire process right. as well. Uh, but in some sense, we have always called ourselves migration tech, if you, want, migration to, if you want to say tech. that. So that's a new terminology to watch out for, we migration are, tech. We are the pioneers of that category. <laughs> so the fact that we have always been very, I think we have been very true to ourselves, knowing that uh, we're not an ed tech firm, we're not a learning company, we're a migration company. And I'm kind of just borrowing what I said in the previous yeah. answer. Uh, to say that uh, we are only a conduit for this person to, person to do better in life. And the real goal here uh, is employability. Mm. So I, I think as long as we understand the real goal is employability, all the products, all the content, the counseling, right. everything is built around ensuring that this person finds the right job for themselves, finds the right life for themselves as they move forward in life. Call yourself a startup nerd. So let's talk about Akshay, the startup nerd. Uh, when did your entrepreneurial journey actually start? And to this date, how has that been like for you? For sure, uh, happy to speak about it <laughs> briefly. So I think the journey started when I was in class three, I was selling glaze paper. I, uh, my dad used to get these conference pads and I realized that this conference pad uh, uh, has very good paper quality which is not available with any other school kids. So I started selling that paper for 75 paisa. I remember that's how I made my few hundred rupees uh, when I was in grade 3. When I was in grade 4, I remember setting up a small club. Uh, I was very privileged to have a computer in my house assembled from Nehru place. And I, I realized that I've played enough Prince of Persia and right. I've read enough comics. Now let me kind of try to distribute access to what I have. Hmm. I'm using these fancy words now. <laughs> Democratize huh. access to these uh, huh. entertainment products and make some money off it. You mentioned something very interesting. You said that you, you're a startup. <laughs> Do you still identify yourself as a startup? No, 100%. I think we are a startup and we'll always be a startup even oh. if we are 20,000 people. So I think having that mindset of uh, getting hands dirty, solving problems very quickly, uh, continuously reiterating uh, what the mission really stands for, uh, continue to kind of define the process, uh, continue to kind of redefine the culture as well as we evolve into a larger company. For example, what the company looked like when we were 20 people or 100 people or mm -hmm. I think 300 people at the same time last year is very different from what we look like at four times the size right now. You were, you've you been mentioned, you've been listed in uh, Forbes India 30 under 30, uh, followed by Forbes Asia 30 under 30, uh, followed by many other accolades of course. Uh, so. If I may ask, what is next for Akshay Chaturvedi, the mm -hmm. startup guy of India? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, very kind of you and anybody else who has uh, uh, tried to uh, uh, motivate us in this journey. Uh, entrepreneurship is a hard journey uh, anywhere in the world. Why do you say so? No, because for every 10 happy days, you have uh, 100 un unhappy days, right? And you have uh, more lows. So uh, while we sometimes say that entrepreneurship is glorified and so on and so forth and you should not glorify startups, but I think uh, we need more people to celebrate entrepreneurship in this country. Would you, would you like to have a chat with, say, for example, the finance minister or with Prime Minister Modi himself, have a coffee with him and discuss your plans for the India startup system ahead? Do you have... If I have to meet somebody, of course, I would love to meet Mr. Adani and have a cup of coffee with him and uh, understand... Uh, uh, how he has scaled uh, this fast and how they've been kind of building uh, an absolutely fantastic company and so many other inspiring entrepreneurs like that in India. What according to Akshay is the hustle culture? Like, do you hustle only a few select people are cut off for the hustle culture? 
Take think, us through the, the terminology. No, sure. I think no, I, I think very simple, right? It's not that this is the first generation who's hustling. I think our parents and their their parents have also hustled yeah. in their own unique ways to yeah. build a life for uh, folks like us. At startups, we get an opportunity to make an impact. Uh, sometimes at a younger age, sometimes with relatively less experience. Mm. Uh, uh, which a larger company will not give us access to. Make me understand from when you started in 2017 hmm. to now, a little bit about your valuation and funding, hmm. and I can see you're smiling about it. So it my, has to be some big numbers. No, no, no. no. I've, <laughs> my, my, my view has evolved uh, around uh, funding and valuation and all of those things. That's why I'm smiling. Huh. If I was to go back in time, uh, I also realized that I've raised money when I did not need it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, which unnecessarily diluted me as a promoter. So Akshay, we think you are changing the curve, but tell Very us. Kind of but tell us <laughs> what really motivates Akshay Chaturvedi and Leverage Edu that is actually changing the curve. Uh, it really gives me goosebumps when I think about the fact that in 2018 we were 100 students a year. Mm. Uh, now uh, we're doing about what 6,000 students a month, like I said. So that's a big change in scale. Uh, when can we kind of get to 50,000 students a month? Mm. So I think that's what kind of really keeps us up. Hi, my name is Akshay Chaturvedi. I'm the founder of LeverageEdu.com. Uh, in conversation today with Outlook Business, India's top business magazine. Uh, please like, follow, share, subscribe, everything that you can do with their YouTube channel, with their social media and uh, share all the links that after all the videos, all the things that they're doing within the series as well on your WhatsApp, Telegram, iMessage, wherever that be. Uh, I'm really excited about doing this conversation and uh, look forward to you guys enjoying it. Thank you.